Dragon Ball is known to be one of the biggest animes ever because of this dude. Hey, it's me, Goku! And while the Dragon Ball series gets more and more hype every time there's a new transformation, we forget about the villains. Dragon Ball's villains usually die off or they're changed into a good guy. But nonetheless, these villains need to get their round of applause. So in this video, I want to give you the top five best villains within Dragon Ball. And also, they have to be the antagonist or the villain of their arc. A good example, Vegeta still counts within the Saiyan saga. But before we get started, if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank y'all for watching, let's get started. Before we jump into the list, I should say that every villain should have multiple aspects to them. A good villain should have strength, a goal, an ambition as to why they do what they want to do. And I will say that some villains within Dragon Ball fall short for having all three of these things. But it doesn't mean that all three of these things have to be completely perfect. So with the number five spot, I want to start off with DBZ and DB Super Broly. Now, as we all know, Broly is the legendary Super Saiyan. Within the DBZ movies, this character really does doesn't have much of a motive. He just realizes that he doesn't mess with Goku for some stupid reason. And throughout the Dragon Ball Super movie, Broly was being manipulated by others. So Broly's intelligence isn't really there. However, the importance of Broly does not come from his ambition or his intelligence, but instead his power. Because Broly is the legendary Super Saiyan, as you see when he transforms, he's stronger than everyone else. And as they have mentioned, he has a whole lot of unlocked potential. Broly's full power Super Saiyan form is very similar to Super Trunks and Super Vegeta. Matter of fact, those two forms from those two characters was based off of Broly. The thing is, for Trunks and Vegeta, the strength of their muscles made them too slow to actually fight. But that doesn't seem to be an issue when it's Broly in his Super Saiyan form. So whether you like DBZ Broly or DB Super Broly, they're all a very good villain that can become even stronger. For the number four spot on the list, we're going with Goku Black and Zamasu. Now it may be a little too much to pair these two characters together, but they are technically the same character. You see, Zamasu himself really hates the human race and he just can't stand them. So when he realizes that he can bully future Trunks' world, I mean, why not? Everyone else can do it, right? However, Zamasu hits a point where his ambition and his intelligence goes to another level. You see, Zamasu was willing to team up with another Zamasu so he can reach his dreams. And while he may be a god, he still thinks it's a smart goal to kill all humans and exterminate them completely. Now when it comes to the other Zamasu Goku Black, it's just Goku using his abilities in a darker way. I mean, he can still go Super Saiyan even though within the anime it's a different color, and he also has the signature Kamehameha. But things that he can also do which comes from Zamasu is making a scythe. And of course, as you can assume, scythes don't tend to be the hero's weapon. But even though Zamasu slash Goku Black has all of this dark potential within them, they still take it to another level fusing together to create Merge Zamasu. This form of Merge Zamasu is strong enough to beat Vegito Blue. And yes, of course I know Vegito, he's never won his life, yes I get it. But Zamasu himself was a very good villain. And even when he transformed to the infinite Zamatsu mode, you needed Zeno to finish him off. Realistically, if they never introduced Beerus and Whis, I wonder if they could defeat Zamatsu. So again, on this list, our number four spot goes to Zamatsu. For our third spot on this list, we have a very handsome gentleman on this list named Cell. Cell is the villain for the Android slash Cell saga. Funny enough, Cell was only the villain after everyone else was dealing with the androids. If you were not spoiled before, Android 16, 17, and 18 were supposed to be the android saga. However, because Dr. Jiro was a freak, he made Cell. Now Cell quickly took over everything when it came to this saga, including the other androids. If you don't know, Cell has the ability to absorb Android 17 and 18. And no matter how freaky freaky it looks, he made these villains before look like nothing. Now Cell really doesn't have a purpose as to why he fights. Cell's main goal is just to say that he is the strongest in the universe and that's it. To him, being perfect is enough and he's willing to absorb other characters to become perfect. Now with his swaggy British accent, he does not become Cell until his final form. The first and second form either look very ugly or very slimy. So when the creator was told to make another version of Cell, he kind of 
they gave him a swaggy little crown. I get that he's supposed to be a beetle, but his stature makes him look a lot more menacing. And as you know, he was probably strong enough to win within his art. Ignoring the fact that Goku huh? decided to help him, the only way the Earth was saved was because Gohan unlocked a new form. And because of Cell, this moment here is iconic in Dragon Ball and probably anime, period. Now again, I'm only talking about Cell, specifically perfect form Cell. So that Cell Max stuff that happened in Super, we do not count him, he is not even on this list. So anyway, our number three spot goes to Cell. Now then, we're slowly rolling up to the final two spots, and with the number two spot, we're going with Vegeta. Now as we all know, Vegeta eventually becomes a good guy at the end. And while he did have his moments later on, such as Majin Vegeta, I can't really count that. Specifically, we're looking at Vegeta from the Saiyan Saga. This of course happens after Raditz has showed up and Nappa and Vegeta show up right after. Now their goal when they get to Earth is to find the Dragon Balls and wish for immortality. Why do they specifically want that? Who knows, but you can do that if you're a villain. And while Vegeta doesn't have a strong stature such as Cell, he's still very powerful in the Saiyan Saga arc. First, they have Nappa fight and he can really only handle the Z fighters to a degree. However, when the tensions start rising, Vegeta takes over by killing Nappa. Now we're never exactly told the relationship between Nappa and Vegeta, but it doesn't really matter because Vegeta kills him anyway. Did he have to kill him? No, but did he do it to show his dominance? Yes. And even then, Vegeta had more tricks up his sleeve than Nappa. Of course, we had the regular things such as key blast attacks, but there was even more that Vegeta could do. When Vegeta was getting desperate, he was able to create his own full moon and turn into a great ape. What's even crazier is Vegeta was able to control his own great ape form. Vegeta in the Saiyan Saga probably had more tricks up his sleeve than we've ever seen before. And plus, we got this iconic Gala Gun versus Kamehameha with Vegeta and Goku. Honestly, if Saiyan Saga Vegeta lasted longer, he could be higher on this list. However, he unfortunately does not top the number one spot. Now, before I tell you who the number one spot is, I must say there are some good honorable mentions. The first one being Demon King Piccolo. DKP was one of the first Dragon Ball villains we had that wasn't a human. While some characters may have some weird thing about them like Tien having three eyes, DKP felt like he was a true villain that just had a murderous intent. Another good honorable mention is from the GT series Baby. Now Baby is a great character that has a real reason as to why he does what he does. However, Baby does not feel like a threat until you see Super Baby 2. Baby's first form and also Baby Vegeta don't really seem threatening. But again, if you look at Baby's backstory as to why he's fighting, it's actually pretty good. Nonetheless, these two characters could be on this list and are great honorable mentions. However, no one on this list hits the number one spot. The best villain within the Dragon Ball series is no other than Frieza. Now, Frieza is a true villain who hates you for just having a tail. When it comes to Frieza's design, he doesn't seem very menacing. Matter of fact, majority of the time we see him in his first form, he's flying around inside a pod. Now, I really don't want to hate on any villain because Bowser Jr. does the same thing. But the only form that Frieza has that gives him a terrifying figure is his second form. And I guess for some people, that third form can be scary in different ways. But if you've been watching Dragon Ball for quite some time, then you know Frieza has many forms. Matter of fact, this is the only reoccurring villain that seems to not die off or switch sides. Even within Dragon Ball Super, he gets a brand new golden form. Now this form isn't much different compared to his regular final form, but it's still there. Frieza's had a great role within the series, especially being a part of the Namek saga. But Frieza is for sure the biggest villain within Dragon Ball. Matter of fact, he has a whole clan named after him and he's not even the father. So again, for the number one spot on this list, we're giving it to Frieza. And that's it. Tell me who you think should and should not be on this list. And as you know, Dragon Ball will have more villains in the future because this series will not die. But with that, I want to appreciate you guys for watching and thank you to Patreon. But before you click off, if you're looking for more Dragon Ball content, I talked about how characters are too powerful over here. Y'all have a good one. Take care.